Hey everyone, welcome to ba back to my channel Leela Web Dev. In today's video, we will dive deeply into the pre rendering in the Angular 19. So, what is this pre rendering concept in the Angular SSM? I will explain you what it is, how it works, and demonstrate a practical example step by step. So, by the end of this video, you will be able to know how to pre render the static pages or dynamic pages in your Angular 19 application using standalone components. So, let's get started about this one. So first of all, you need to understand about this pre-rendering. So let's try to go to the Google and we'll see anywhere if they try to explain Angular SSR pre-rendering. We'll try to see any diagrams or anything it is present. So not medium. Let's go to the images. So here you will be able to see about the pre-rendering concept. They have given something like. So for example, let's say that whenever uh, I will try to open in a big tab, this one. Yeah. Hopefully you are able to uh, you are able to see it. So now here, for example, let's say that whenever the user navigates to slash books directly, if the user navigates to slash books, so first of all slash books request will be made, and the server compiles the books page and renders the HTML, and it will render back the HTML page to this one. So this is the basic implementation of the server side rendering. Now what is the pre-rendering concept? So when the user navigates to slash books, it will request the books. But here, what it will try to do it is it with the slash books page, whatever the HTML page, everything will be there. It will keep it in our file system. So I will try to show you where is the HTML will be saved. Directly, the HTML file will be saved in the file system. So whenever you are making a slash books means it will try to check in the file system whether a already compiled HTML page is there or not. If it is there means then it will send back to the browser. And uh, for example, if it doesn't have means it will go back to the server, it will process the request and it will save it and it will send it to you. So this is called as a pre-rendering concept at the build time only it will uh, not uh, at the build time only it will try to save the everything. So here by the definition what I can say. So here I can tell you the clear definition for this one. So pre-rendering is a process where Angular generates the static HTML for your application during the build phase. This boosts the SEO and performance and improves the page load time since static files are served directly to the browser. So this is one thing which I want to tell you. So now how we can add an SSR to an existing project. So that is nothing to ng add. You can use the Angular SSR. We can do it. In. So now let's try to implement the pre-rendering concept in this one. So if you try to go here into this, so we now, we, now you have a clear understanding about this pre-rendering concept. So now here, if I try to open this angular.dev, so here angular.dev, so this is our documentation, official documentation. So if you go to the docs here and we are learning about the server side rendering and the hybrid rendering and we are learning about the build time pre-rendering and here you'll be able to see pre-rendering commonly referred to as static site generation. We'll try to see about the static site generation also. So now here, so it is giving you the options how we can pre-render the parameterized applications and all those things. I will try to show you this product slash one and product slash triple five. So for this one, what we need to do. So just I will try to explain you how we can see without pre-rendering and also the with pre-rendering. And right now we have a application already the Angular SSR application is there. So now I will try to remove delete this, this thing. So now in order to have this pre-rendering concept and all those things, if you want to work, it means, so I will try to show you. So the normal command, which you are trying to use it right now is the NPM start. So this is the common command is a build command. So just, I will try to show you the example for this one. So now this is the thing. Let's go to the app.component.ts file. And right now we will uh, uh, add some routes to the application. So here I will be adding some routes app.routes.php so here we'll be having uh, some path is equal to empty and i will write load the component um, home component okay so let's create the home component for this one so i will be creating the nggc home component sorry home just try to keep it as in just home so now let's create so home component has been created so let's try to include this home component here so fine and let's try to have an another one that is nothing but component path uh, is equal to um, <coughs> HTTP cache we have used it right so let's load the component that one HTTP cache component and now we will have an another one that is nothing but dynamic component we will have it so here I will have something like products 
slash id okay so anybody can so we will load the component product component so let's try to create that product component also mm, ng gc product okay so let's try to create this product component also so now product component is also created so here i will be using that product component okay so these are the routes which i am trying to implement let's go to the app.config.ts file whether the routes has been implemented into this one or not app.config.ts file yeah and here we are having the provide router and the routes is also added so here when we are trying to use the client side means we need to use the with fetch so this is the recommended one which you need to use it so fine so we are having the cache options post request to and all those things we have learned about this cache option thing fine let's go to the app.component.html file so here I want to clear it out. So I will remove this cache thing and let's try to keep it that one. So this is some content whose height and all those things. And here I can have one UL and here I can have one LI and here I can have one A link and uh, router router link. Okay. So this one is the home page. So I will try to keep it as home page. Sorry, home page and i can have another one slash uh, http cache so which is nothing but uh, http cache http cache okay and i will try to use another one and here this one will be products slash one and here i can use product one so now another one will be here product slash three let's assume so i will be having product slash three so this is just i am using it and let's go to the app.component.ts file and let's remove this http cache component as we are not using it and here i need to add the router link that's it so this is our basic thing let's go here into this one and here let's go to the http localhost 4200 i try to open this one so you should be able to see cannot bind router link it is an unknown property of anchor link something like it will show some error so fine now you will be able to see home http cache products now if i try to click on http cache i am able to get the products product one product three and everything is working fine so now we have we are successfully able to do this one so now what i want to do it is here so now i want to pre-render the product slash one and product slash three so i want to show you this one so why because when you are trying to use this product one and product three i need to show the product details for showing the product details we need to have a node.js api so that we can create our node.js api and we will try to have our uh, fake uh, normal api rest api and we'll try to see whether the pre-rendering option will be working or fine so this is all about the basics of the pre-rendering concept in the angular 19 hope you understood about this concept so now in the next uh, video, I will try to explain you about this pre-rendering, how we can do it that for the dynamic routes and all those things, pre-rendering, how we can do it. I will try to show you. So hope you understand about this one. So if you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, like it and subscribe for more Angular tips. So let me know in the comments if you would like me to cover more advanced topics or something like that. So you need see you next time. Thank you. Bye.